I've been card making for a few years now, but I have never made envelopes. So I thought it would be fun to learn how to make them, which I did. And in this video, I will show you how to create two very simple DIY envelopes without any specialty products like the VR Memory Keepers punch board or envelope dies, because I don't have them either. And I also decided to decorate them by creating envelope liners, which I will show you at the end. So let's get through the products I will be using first. Here are the absolute must-haves. You will need a paper, just a regular sheet. If you are making envelopes for metric A6 card, you need A4 paper. And if you are in the US, for the regular size A2 card, just use the 8.5 by 11 paper. And the best is to use a lightweight paper, so it's easy to score. Then you will need scissors, an adhesive, tape or liquid, it doesn't matter. And you also need a finished card, or you can just use a card base or create a template. You can completely eyeball the measurements with the help of your card base, but I want it to be a little bit more precise, so I will be using a ruler, craft mat and a bone folder. The bone folder is useful for folding regardless. If you do not have it, you could use any tool that doesn't leave any stains, like the side of a pen or a blunt knife. And I also will be using an X-Acto knife and a paper trimmer to have straight cut lines. And I forgot to include it here, but I also will be using a corner rounder and a pencil that is also not in here. But if you do not have any of these additional products, that's okay. All you need are the first four things, paper, scissors, adhesive, and the card. And the product list and written instructions you will find over on my blog. The link is in the description. And if you have any questions, just ask in the comments. I will start with a simple envelope, which is this one. These envelopes are for the regular size cards, but you can adjust it if you are making other sizes. The paper I'm using for both envelopes is this beige paper. This paper weighs 120 grams, which in the US it should be 44 pounds. You can use a heavier paper, but you don't want a cardstock that is too heavy, which would be a little bit difficult to fold. To make this envelope, you can just take your card, place it at the bottom of the paper and fold the top over it. But I found it easier to make a mark with a pencil just above the card and I used the sides of the paper as a guide to align it and make the fold straight. And then I used my bone folder to smooth it out. Next, I folded the top part and again I used the edge of the paper making sure that the fold is straight. And then I smooth it out with my bone folder. The next step is to do the side folds. Again, you can use your card as a guide and fold it like that. Just make sure you leave some wiggle room. But I wanted both sides to be the same, so I measured. I'm using here the metric system, so if you are using US sizes, you can do the same thing, just adjust it to the size of your card. A six card is around 15 centimeters wide, so I added half a centimeter on each side. A4 paper is 21 cm on the shorter side, so I measured 2.5 cm on each side. Here I used my ruler to help me with the folding. I drew two dots with my pencil to keep the ruler straight. And with my bone folder, I lifted the paper from below and went along the ruler to create the fold. And then I used the bone folder to smoothen it out. After I was finished with the one side, I repeated this process on the other side. Of course, you could use a scoring board to do the folds if you have one. I do have a scoring board, but I only have a mini version and the paper is too long. I was thinking about buying a bigger one, but they cost about 30 euro. For a piece of plastic, that's too expensive. And I prefer this method. What I was thinking is to create a template to avoid all the measuring, but even with the measuring, it goes faster the more envelopes you make. Now with all the folds done, the next step is to cut out all the corner pieces at the top and the bottom. Here I mark them with X so you know which ones to cut. So you can use scissors here. I would recommend using a big or long scissors to get a straight cut. I only have tiny scissors, so I used my X-Acto knife instead. I took out my craft mat and also another ruler. This has a cork material at the bottom, which helps the ruler to remain steady and not move. 
The flaps that are at the bottom, uh, those I cut at an angle. I'm not sure if I'm explaining it well, but if you close the side flaps and then you put the bottom flap over it, you will find very quickly if it closes well. If you have problems at the bottom, just cut those flaps at an angle. You can do that at the top as well, but I will be doing something else later. But I did cut the flaps at the top as you can see here, I just did not cut them at an angle. I wasn't going to film this part, but then I thought you might come across a similar thing and this is how you correct it. My folding wasn't great, I'm not sure if you can see it here, but the bottom flap was sticking out. So to make it neater, I decided to cut them slightly shorter using the X-Acto knife. But I didn't cut it at an angle, I cut it straight. Actually on my storeboard envelopes, this part is shorter as well. And now the envelope looks much neater. You can finish up the envelope right here by adding adhesive, but I like the larger gap on this storeboard envelope, so I decided to cut it on my envelope as well. So I took my trimmer and cut a bit from the top and the bottom, making sure that the top and the bottom still overlap. And this will be also perfect when I added the decorative paper later. One more extra step I did here, I really like the rounded corners on the storeboard envelope, and I haven't used my corner round punch for ages. This was one of my first things I bought when I started card making, so I decided to use it and I rounded all the visible corners. You can also use scissors for this, but this is completely optional. What you can also do if you have a border dies, you can use those to create a nice pattern. I do have border dies, but unfortunately they are too short. So if you have border dies that are a little bit longer, you can try using those. So to finish up the card, I used a tape runner and I applied adhesive on both sides of the bottom flap and then I closed it to attach it with the side flaps. And if you want to have an adhesive at the top part as well, so your envelope is ready to go, you can use a double-sided tape like this, but this is also optional, you can add an adhesive later when you are ready to use your envelope. So that's my first envelope. Now let's make more traditional envelope with the triangle flap. For this envelope, you need a square paper and I always thought you need something like 12 by 12 paper, but you need this size only if you are making a bigger envelope. For a regular size, you can use a regular sheet of paper and cut it into a square. So if you are making an envelope for an A6 card, use A4 size paper and cut the longer side to 21 centimeters. And this should also work if you are making an envelope for the US A2 size card, use the 8.5 by 11 paper and cut the longer side to 8.5 inches. To make the folds, again, you can place your card in the middle and just fold all four sides, leaving a little bit of wiggle room, which I would do as well if I did not have my craft mat. But I want it to be more exact, so I did a little bit of measuring. First I measured the middle and I used the two triangle edges to make sure I placed the pencil mark right in the middle, just a little dot. I started with the side folds and I measured 8 cm from the middle on each side. Together it makes 16 cm. Same as with the previous envelope, half a cm added on each side. To make sure I'm folding in a straight line, I place the paper on my craft mat and I use the left and right edges of the paper and I align them on the same line that is on the mat. I placed my ruler on top of it and I also use the ruler at the top and the bottom of the mat, making sure the ruler is straight. And with my bone folder, I went under the paper and I lifted it up to create the fold. And then with the bone folder, I smoothed it out. And then I repeated the process on the other side. I actually had to flip it because I am too clumsy and I was not able to do my fold with my left hand. So there is another step to it. But if that's no problem for you, you can just do the folding without flipping the paper. Next, I worked on the top and the bottom flap. First I measured, A6 card measures 10.5 cm on the shorter side, adding a half a cm on each side makes it 11.5, so I measured 5.7 cm from the middle on each side. And I repeated the process when folding, I aligned the edges of the paper 
bit the lines of the craft mat. I also used a washi to stop it from moving. Then I made sure my ruler is straight and I folded the paper. I thought I could try using my mini scoring board, but I didn't like it. It's too short and also I placed it the wrong way around, so the folding wasn't easy. But if you have a bigger scoring board, use it. It should make the folding easier and quicker. So here is the folded envelope. As you can see, the card fits perfectly. Now we just need to cut the corners. I mark them here with a pencil so you can see what to cut. Here's also when I realized I measured wrong at the top and bottom flap as the corners are different, but luckily the card fits. So I cut the corners using my scissors. This was very easy and quick to do. You can add the adhesive at this point, but I wanted to make the envelope neater just to resemble shoveboard envelopes. So I cut the bottom flap to make it straight using my paper trimmer. On the top and the bottom fold, I also cut the... What are these even called? Before the flaps go into a triangle, there are these short straight parts. I cut them at a small angle as they were slightly sticking out. So the envelope is folded, but since I have that corner rounder, I used it here again, I used it on the top flap. Again, if you do not have it, that's okay, just skip it or cut it with your scissors. Next, I glued the envelope together. You only need to apply the adhesive on the sides of the bottom flap and close it. The same as I did on the first envelope. I also used a double-sided tape at the top flap, but you can do that later when you are actually going to use the envelope. The envelopes are finished, but since I use this boring beige paper, they look a little bit plain. So I thought it would be fun to decorate them by creating envelope liners. An envelope liner is just this nice decorative paper that some envelopes have inside. The first thing what you can do is to use a pattern paper or a wrapping paper. And for the first envelope, 6x6 pattern paper fits perfectly, no cutting needed. I placed the paper inside of the envelope, made sure it's centered. I used my ruler to create a fold. You can do that without a ruler, but it helps. Then I used my tape runner. You can also use a liquid glue and I applied it only over the top flap. This is important. Do not apply it at the bottom. The paper needs to move as you open and close the envelope. I folded the pattern paper down. Last time making sure it's centered and straight and then I folded the top flap over it and adhered them together. I wish I rounded the edges so it matches the envelope, but I forgot. And in the end, it really doesn't matter. It looks pretty either way. For the second envelope, I thought I will create my own pattern paper and print it out. I just created a black and white image, printed it on a regular printer paper. I created this in Canva, which is an online app, and I only have the free account, so you can make this yourself as well. All you need is to create an account in Canva or just search in Google for some images. Or for my next card, I made an envelope and I stamped the pattern for the envelope liner. So there are plenty of options that you can do. First, I cut the paper in half. This way you can decorate two envelopes using one sheet of paper. Here I was still a little bit experimenting a bit, finding the best way how to cut it. What you can do is to trace the envelope, especially mark the top and where you want the triangle to end on the sides and also mark the height of the envelope as the paper is a little bit too long. And while this technique does not require a ruler, what worked for me after cutting the paper in half is measure the middle of the shorter side of the paper and the points where I want the triangle to end, then cut it using my paper trimmer and lastly cut the bottom to adjust the height. After I cut the envelope liner, here I didn't forget the corner rounder and I rounded the triangle. To adhere the liner, just like with the other envelope, first I created the fold and then I applied the adhesive on the top part only, making sure it's centered and then I closed the flap. And you can also use paper liners to decorate your storeboard envelopes. For this one, I used the same printed pattern paper that I made and I think it looks really pretty. It definitely fits this envelope. So here are the two finished envelopes. I really like how they turned out and it does get quicker the more you make. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something and I hope you will give this a try. If you have any questions, just ask in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will be back very soon with another crafty video.